Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to be doing a fun little tutorial I've been wanting to do for a little while now and basically what we're gonna be doing is recreating the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 logo from the recent trailer that came out for the movie. So ever since I saw this logo from the trailer, I always looked at it and said like that isn't that difficult to probably recreate in After Effects. And so I'm gonna start the process from scratch here so you guys can follow along. I'm gonna make a new uh, comp here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this screenshot from YouTube to be our sort of reference that we're gonna be looking at. I wanna start by creating the Sonic text here. And using in After Effects, you can use this plugin called Saber. I'm just gonna name this uh, Saber Sonic. It's like a crossover of, you know, Star Wars and Sonic or something like that. And using the plugin Saber, and this plugin, you, you, there's no reason you should not have this plugin. It's literally for free and it's on Video Copilot's website. And so the font I'm gonna be using here, it's, it's not the exact font, but it's something that's pretty close to it, is Gotham Ultra. You don't have to use the exact same font I'm using, just something that kind of is similar to it would be totally fine. Sonky. All you have to do is just spell out Sonic here in whatever font you choose to use that's similar to it. Go into your Saber Sonic comp here and change the core type from Saber to text layer, to text layer. And go ahead and just pick your text there. And you're gonna see it's it's taken the shape of the Sonic text here, but the glow is a little too bright right now and the core size is a little too bright, so we can bring the core size down. You know, that's basically the, the core <laughs> effect that you do here. The main thing that we need to do next is, if you notice, it's not exactly right here. What we have to do is we have to make this sort of hedgehog, the Sonic the Hedgehog quills thing here on the C. And that's gonna require us to take a couple steps here. So what we can do is go back to our text layer. We'll solo that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to layer masks. So it's gonna create a solid with masks outlining these letters. And to do that, we're gonna to go to auto trace. I usually find that by just kind of searching trace here. Auto trace, it's under layer, hit auto trace, and that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna basically just recreate the text here and make it into a solid layer with masks outlining the letters here. So in doing that, we can get rid of the Sonic uh, text that we had before. We're gonna manipulate this layer here to create those little quills. To do that, we're gonna just kind of jump into this section here. In this section here, we have a bunch of points here that are creating the C and we're going to manipulate those points and to make those quills all I have to really do is just move these points you can see already the quills are sort of forming here and you know you really want to take a good amount of time and be very precise with this what you can kind of do to speed up the process a little bit is you use a reference to kind of trace along here. Obviously, you know, if you were making this from scratch, you wouldn't have the reference of the actual title, but I'm just going to kind of use the reference of the actual title here to sort of speed up the process just a little bit. I'm going to put this below the auto trace, disable the auto trace, but we can still see the points here. And what we can do is we can kind of edit these points to make it look a little bit more accurate to what it is. All right, so we're at a pretty good spot here. Feel pretty confident about this design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the Saber Sonic. And now that the text layer is gone, we're gonna change this to layer masks. And we're actually gonna take all these masks and put them, copy them, put them on the Saber Sonic layer. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna read those masks that are on the layer and it's going to create the design that we made. So let's just solo the Sonic layer there. And yeah, that, that's pretty good. So let's move on to the next step here. And that would be um, creating the big two that's next to it. And the two, that's gonna be a lot easier because all we have to do 
is go and make a two here in the same font that we did the Sonic logo. We're gonna go and we're just gonna make this a little bigger because if we look at the uh, the reference here, the two is a little bigger. And we can even use this and use it to kind of help place where we want it to be over here. So it's got good placement there. So now we're going to do our Saber again. So I'm just gonna save some time, duplicate Saber Sonic, create a new layer. We're gonna do Saber 2. And change this to text layer, change it to two. So it's got two. So now what you, what you can see is even though all these are showing here, you can only see the one, two here. That's because it's uh, currently being displayed in normal mode, which means it has a black background in it. So we're just gonna change this to screen and we're gonna change the Saber Sonic to screen too. And so obviously next what we have to do is just change the color of the two to more of a yellow color for Tails. Cause Tails in this movie. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested about this movie because this movie looks a little bit more like how I imagined a Sonic movie to look. It's got more of the characters and it's got, you know, the Chaos Emeralds and the Master Emerald too. That's a little bit more of a Sonic story. So from here, what we're gonna add is we're gonna add in the text that's below here. And that would be the, the Hedgehog text. We're gonna go in here and the text I've been using for that, the font I've been using for that is just impact. And I think it's pretty much close to what they did for it. So the main thing that we need to change here is we need to change the kerning here and pull it way up and make it way down. So basically, you know, that's that's a, it's a good design principle that they use here is you want kind of your text to be sort of in this little box that you create here. I think I'm gonna make this two just a little bit larger. And just, you know, just manipulating the original text here will automatically manipulate the, the saber layer as well. So bring it down a little bit. I'm gonna have this come in line with text. We can even use a ruler if we want to. Yeah, so there you have it, it's pretty close. So what we can do from here is we can add the gradient onto the hedgehog text. I'm gonna use this and bring it down a little bit, just a reference. So we can go in here, do, do layer style, gradient overlay, go into the edit gradient, pick ourselves a um, kind of a darker, okay, so this is the bottom. So we can pick kind of a lighter blue. We can even kind of color pick what they did here if we wanted it to be the most accurate. Clip pick the top and we'll keep that for now. And one thing we have to do is we need to make this a little bit more legible. So to do that, we'll go into our Saber Sonic and sort of uh, bring the glow spread down a little bit, like glow bias down a little bit so we can kind of see it better now. And sort of, sort of dial in the uh, kind of the intensity back a little bit, pull the, pull the glow in a little bit more. And so, yeah, so with that, you can clearly read the text a lot better there. So in, in consideration here, I'm kind of looking back here and I'm looking at the text layers here and I'm not super happy with the way that the auto tracing created the S, O, N, and I here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of like backtrack a little bit. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna recreate these, uh, the S, O, N, and I here, just using the text layer. And I'm gonna change that obviously back to our Gotham. So obviously like we have the text to be the same size as we originally had it here. And all we have to do is take our Saber Sonic, duplicate that and have this go to text layer plus Sonny, Sonny. So we can call this Saber Letters Sonic. We got the Sonny and, the, and then just the, uh, the C here and we'll change that to Saber C. All we have to do in the Saber C 
is we'll kind of solo it here and we have to get rid of the masks that are in the other letters and that will solve everything and it should be easy enough just to boop, all gone. Got our title in pretty good shape here. So there's a couple things we're gonna add to it. Um, one of the cool things that we can add to it is those cool lightning bolt effects that that come off of the uh, the sonic text here. And what we can do is we can go in and go to our sonic letters, sonic, saber, sonic, sonic, saber, saber, sonic, saber, sonic letters, duplicate that. I'm gonna do this and call it electricity letters. And it's gonna be the same path that we created here, but we're gonna change this to more of, you know, we'll try one of these, I know, eh, not that one, um, change one of these to like the electric layer here and kind of work on the settings a little bit, maybe create a little more subtle T in it, a little bit more just the electricity here. And what we can do is we can create this so, so that this particular electricity layer is just happening on certain areas of the text. And so I'm gonna change what we call the end offset. And you can see what that does is it just changes it so that each part of each letter only has a section of it that it has the saber applied to. And what you can do is, you know, if you wanted to, you can use this to animate the offset amount so that it could like, you know, build on the entire thing. We're not gonna do that for this one. We're gonna do more of a kind of a cool evolution effect here. So we got some cool lightning effects, electricity effects kind of going around the letters here. So I'm gonna just make a, uh, Keyframe the max evolution, go, let's say five seconds in and just pull this up a little bit. Yeah, so basically what we make in here is just like, we got these cool electric trails that go across the letters here. And this is kind of the base of where you can work with the animation here. You know, you don't have to just have it be sort of just going around here. You can have, you know, them pop on and pop off it's really kind of up to you where you want to go from here. And we're going to want to do the same thing with our Saber C here. So in, why don't we just do this? Let's duplicate our electricity layers and let's change it to a electricity C and just go ahead and copy the mask onto here and change this to layer masks. So we got the electricity going kind of around there. Another thing we need to add is the tails on the end of the two. So go in and make a new layer on a solid. We're gonna call this Saber Tails. Also Tails is like one of my favorite characters in the game. So I'm excited he's in the movie. Saber, put on Saber Tails. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna kind of um, hide the layer here and we're gonna create the tails. Again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reference the first image here and just kind of make some tails based off of this. So it kind of basically what it is, it's just more of like kind of a, a curved triangle shape here. Again, using these handlebars here to make the curves and adjust them accordingly. So there's kind of a point here. And the, the bottom part of this is gonna be hidden by the glow that we create there. And let's kind of see how that turned out go ahead and obviously put this onto layer masks. We're gonna want this to be uh, more of a kind of bright, look like it was more like a bright pink. That's, that's looking pretty good. So let's uh, move this over. So it's on the edge here. And let's create that little glow that creates the separation here. Let's go in and create a layer for that. Let's do a solid layer, kind of within that range. Make a, a rounded rectangle. So what I ended up coming kind of using here is I use optical glow from the Maxon like Red Giant 
pack, like universe pack here. Obviously not everybody has that. So you can use a kind of a combination of different glows here too, as well to sort of get this effect going on here. Um, I kind of just liked how the optical glow turned out, but obviously you use whatever methods you have available to you. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of animation to these tails here. What I probably should do is I'm gonna kind of move these a little closer together. So I'm going to actually duplicate this and separate the tails into their own layers here. So tail one and tail two, tail or Taylor, Taylor, who's Taylor? Get rid of the mass there, so there's only one. And then get rid of the first mass, so this is the second one. To do this, I'm gonna add a wave warp. And, well, that's not quite what we want, but it's on the same lines of kind of where we're going for with this. So we all you have to do is change up the wave height and width here. So if we change the height down a little bit, it makes it look a little bit more like how the tail would move. We're gonna change them both kind of, make the height low and then the width kind of high. So that's kind of similar to how tails would move his tail. Going in and actually changing kind of the path layers to simulate the animation that they did for that is it's gonna be a pretty time consuming process. Um, so it's definitely something that you can do if you have the skills and if you have the time to do that. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just gonna add like a kind of a simple wavy tail waving animation here. And that's that's a pretty good place to start with. And so I'm gonna take that wave warp. I'm gonna move it on to the other tail. And all I have to do is kind of change the direction of that to fit more of where the tails go. And there we go, we got some waving tails there. So what I want to do next, it's just kind of simple. I want to add a little bit of um, an expression onto the intensity of the optical glow. So that'd be an intensity if you're doing the regular glow, but it would be the uh, the amount for uh, this particular glow. I'm gonna add a little bit of a wiggle on there just to add some flicker onto it. So nothing crazy, just something where it's flickering fairly often and with a pretty conservative amount. Yeah, so we just see there's a little pulsating there that kind of adds to the effect as well. See if there's anything else that we need to add in here. And there's a couple of things, you know, we have this sort of echoing glow that happens in the background here. So we can go into the sonic letters here, duplicate that and bring this other one and we'll call it background, it's the background layer and change it to a 3D object and just kind of push it to the back a little bit and push it behind here. Now it's gonna look a little odd at this, at this moment, but when we add a couple of effects to it, it's going to help. So what we can do is we can add in a directional blur here and that kind of makes um, a bit of a uh, illusion that there's sort of an echoing effect going on here. Pull it to the side, put it in here can see it with the actual other layer. Put it off to the side. I think I'm also gonna add a cross blur to it too, which sort of makes these makes these cool, this kind of moving light ray lines here, which is which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool effect that I like to add on to, to things like this. And so we just remember if we do that for this portion, we also wanna do it for the C too as well. And we'll kind of do like the same thing for the two here as well. That's kind of the basis of our title effect here. You know, there's obviously a lot more you can go into building this title together, similar to how they did in the trailer and stuff like that, but it's a little bit more time than we have for this tutorial. But if you guys want to go more specifically into all of that, please comment down below and maybe I'll make a part two of this tutorial in the future. And so there you have it. So making the Sonic 2 logo in After Effects really isn't that difficult. Feel free to comment if you want a part two to this or if there's any other After Effects tutorials you're interested in seeing in the future. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone.